Let's bring this project to an end. After I finished the rust treatment for the inner layer parts, I did one final test assembly before I marked the center line of my back piece. I then drew two evenly spaced 4x4cm squares for the Peltier modules. Afterwards, the center point of the top section got its cross label so that I could drill a precise 6mm hole for the temperature sensor. And since I was already using the drill, I created four holes in each square of the Peltier spots. These holes are necessary to insert my saw blade easily so that I could cut out the square pieces. Now that the inner construction received all the mandatory openings, I got myself wood glue and started to combine the parts. But let's just say I acted completely stupid during my first try. The success method would consist of firstly gluing the side and top bottom pieces together and then adding the back plate. While the glue was drying, I measured out a fitting square piece of 2mm thick aluminum which will later act as a heatsink for the cold side. And of course, I used my decoupeer saw afterwards to create it. A couple hours later, the glue of the inner compartment was finally dry, but I completely forgot to create small indentations for the wire of the Peltier modules. You might want to do this before gluing all of this together. Makes your life a bit easier. Then I went outside with it and spray painted the whole thing white. The outside does not really matter that much, but I did a couple of paint layers for the inside. Once the paint was dry, I used sandpaper to rub the surface of the aluminum and acetone to remove the remaining fat layer. To bind the two materials, I used a small drop of two component adhesive in each corner of the aluminum sheet. And I also recommend transformers to apply enough contact pressure. While the glue was drying, I already prepared 4x4cm squares made of the aluminum sheet. Because, surprise, the Peltier modules are not thick enough to fill out the MDF gap to reach the heatsink on the hot side. That is why those little squares are necessary. And with the same procedure as before, except this time I use thermal conductive glue instead of two component adhesive, I stack two of them in each cutout. And on top of course, sit the two Peltier modules. After this madness, I used another glue to bind the styrofoam sides and top bottom to the inner layer. With the help of a 6mm drill bit, I extended the hole for the temperature sensor and used a cutter to create the cutouts for the heatsinks on the backside of the styrofoam piece. Once those seemed to fit nicely, I linked the styrofoam to the MDF. Then it was time to move over to the outer layer by firstly marking the location for the heat sinks on the back side. Afterwards, I used a small piece of strip board and female headers to build an extension board for my Arduino Nano. I also created 3mm holes in each corner of this board to mount it in the end just as the relay board onto the back side of the outer layer. Next step is pretty obvious. I created the necessary holes and a bigger additional hole where I can later feed my wires through and used my saw to make the square cutouts. I don't know why, but back then it felt a bit repetitive. Nevertheless, I continued by creating round cable ducts with the help of my crude hot wire cutter. As the name suggests, I can hide my wires in there later on to create an even surface for the upcoming outer layer. Then I temporarily secured the sides to the cooler to measure out four fitting spots for air holes which will later let the warm air of the heatsinks escape. After they were drilled, I enlarged them a bit with my temperature sensor which then got secured in its hole with the help of two component adhesive. Before I went outside again to spray paint only one side of the outer layer white, I mounted the CPU heatsinks onto their Peltier modules. The procedure should be clear by now. Next, I secured the Peltier, fan and sensor wires inside the cable ducts with the help of glue, which I then also used to secure the sides of the outer layer to the styrofoam sides. But not the back side. It gets a bit of special attention by securing the relay and Arduino board onto it with the help of 3mm bolts and nuts. 
And after I extended the wires of my main electronics, I fed them through the bigger hole, lowered the whole plate and sealed it shut with the help of four brackets. You may have also already noticed that the front is still completely open. Let's change that by pressing the inner front port into its place and adding a bigger styrofoam layer on top which was followed by the final outer layer piece. Once the glue was dry, I was able to remove this door construction and added a simple handle before I attached it permanently to the cooler through two hinges. And after I added four rubber feet onto the bottom sides, the mechanical build was finally done. For the last step, I redid the wiring like I described it in part 1 and used a powerful 12V power supply because the normal current draw is around 7 amps. After positioning the cans inside the compartment, preferably near the cold aluminum sheet, and closing the door, we have to wait quite a while, in my case overnight, to reach a decent temperature. Until next summer, I may need to improve the messy wiring, the white paint and the power supply solution, but for now it is a pretty cool project. I hope you liked this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. That would be awesome. Stay creative and I will see you next time.